this way now because your back is to the camera. Well, that's okay. The camera has a... Yeah, but, I mean, she, but sitting there, she, her back. Thanks for letting us interview you. The Atlanta Historical Society is doing an oral history project of World War II veterans. Your interview will be filed in Atlanta at the Historical Society and at the Library of Congress in Washington. Start with your name, address, age, and birth date. Then your introduction into what branch of the military and the date and place where you were inducted, and then go on to your military experiences and end by telling how the war changed your life. While you are talking, if we have a question, we'll wave our hand. You will have an hour and a half to talk, and I'll wave my hand when you have an hour when you have a half an hour left. Do you have any questions before we begin? No, I don't think so. Uh, it's it's been 58 years ago, and as I mentioned to Anne. Uh, I didn't remember what I had for breakfast this morning, so I don't know if I remember what happened 58 years ago very well, but I'll try. It's amazing, want, though, how much men have remembered. And, and, and you want to know where I was? Yeah. Well, uh, wait, let Alex. Uh, okay. I'll begin the interview with a short introduction I'll start now. Today is Sunday, September 7, 2003, and this is the beginning of an interview with Kushal Kaplan, at his home at 2746 Ridgewood Road, Northwest Atlanta, Georgia. My name is Alex Glustrom, and Mr. Kaplan is a close friend of my grandparents. Mr. Kaplan, will you state for the, rec for the recording what war you served in, what branch of the service you were in, and what was your rank when you went in and when you left? Uh, I, I was in the, in the Air Corps, and uh, I was in the Air Corps for the entire uh, tour of duty. I went into service in January of 1942, and uh, I was discharged in December of 1945. So had the war already begun when you um, were enlisted? Uh, the, the war had already begun. The war started. Uh, actually, Germany invaded Poland. I mean, but was the U.S. involved in the war when you were uh, The U.S. The, uh, the bomb was dropped, the Japanese dropped the bomb on December 7th, 1945. Five. 41. 41, yeah. 41. 1941. I entered the service in January of 42. Uh, I was I was drafted into the service then. I served uh, uh, in, in at Fort Bragg for training, and I. You were applied. already through law school then. I had finished law school, and my basic training was at Fort Bragg in North Carolina. And how old were you? I was twenty-nine. Did you have a practice you had to leave, a law practice? I, I had finished school and I was doing uh, free <laughs> free service, you know, just to practice, you know, the, the, the judge would appoint me to cases and, and uh, I didn't have an, an established practice uh, when the war started. And I, I was in basic training, I guess, for six or eight weeks, and I applied for uh, criminal investigation, CID, and I was accepted for school. I went to FBI school at uh, Fort Custer. They had an FBI school set up for, for criminal investigation uh, service people. I finished criminal investigation and went overseas, and uh, interesting job, and I was not uh, a frontline troop at all. Uh, I worked with uh, 
friend, Conrad Denae, whom I don't know what happened to. He spoke French and I could get by in German. And uh, it, it was a very interesting tour of duty in, in, uh, in the Criminal Investigation D Division. It involved uh, crime. It, you know, the Army was a cross-section of, uh, of people. Criminals in the army, just as just as you did uh, in civilian life, and uh, it involved crimes uh, between civilians and soldiers, and uh, a walls, thefts, things of that sort. And I will mention a couple interesting cases that uh, that I worked on. That really, I, I haven't even told my family about this. Uh, Cigarettes, believe it or not, were, were were accepted in the army. As a matter of fact, the service provided cigarettes to soldiers with K rations. The army and the service sent cigarettes to hospitals. It's hard to believe. No, I, st I distributed them in the <laughs> hospitals. You did. Well, what what were you? In Red Cro I was in Red Cross. Oh. Well, anyway, this this one case involved. Uh, an entire company of soldiers, they sidetracked a whole rail car of cigarettes and they were selling them on the black market and this company, including the captain and all the, all the members of the company were quite well to do and uh, uh, we, we, we saw that case through informants. Another interesting case that I recall was uh, involved a British AWOL soldier who had been in, he was very interesting, very intelligent, and he'd been in continuous service since D-Day, and this was nine months afterwards or whatever. And he, uh, he claimed that he was just stressed out and was looking for something to do, and he went AWOL, and he found this small German hotel that was abandoned by the German owner, and he knew where AWOL people were, so he got himself an AWOL truck driver, an AWOL cook, and he just set up a company, took over this hotel, set up a company of a number of men, a number of soldiers, 100 men, and he drew rations through forged requisitions for this number of people and he set up the hotel and the AWOLs from all over knew that this was the hotel to come to to get a woman. He got prostitutes to get a woman to get a good meal and we had the, M we had the MPs uh, raid the place. I've forgotten whether it was right before Thanksgiving or right before Christmas, but uh, they were serving turkey and they had all the women and the AWOLs there <laughs> and, and we collected a bunch there. With the with the MPs, what, what uh, happened to them? Yeah. Was they, 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 was they were arrested. What they, 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 they were court martialed and put put in prison. Yeah. So. In what city were you in when all this was? I happened? I was in 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 Castle, Germany. Uh, I think when this happened, it was in uh, Castle. I served in in France, in England, France, Germany, and and uh, Luxembourg for a short period of time. Uh, I, I was in, in it's pronounced Cré, I think, C-R-I-E-L, France. Uh, first of all, I was in Bournemouth, England, which is right on the coast of England, and, and that's where the big armadas of warships uh, were forming. And uh, I went over to, to Cré, France, stayed there for a while, and I was in, in uh, Luxembourg for a short period of time, and then in Germany. Uh, Germany, oh, this was after, a, a bit after the war, I went to a party with this friend of mine. It's about the only person that I have kept in contact. He's a, an attorney down in Miami. We went to a party up, up in the mountains near Garmer's Park, Park and Kirshen. If you've heard of Garmer's Park, Park and Kirshen, that's where the, the what is this, the famous Hitler, which... No, with passion plays. Oh, the 
compassion place. This is right near, right near. Oberammergau. 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 It comes back. And anyway, we had to go up to the up the mountain in a cable car. And these cable cars were operated by some by some Germans at the time. And my friend and I were a little leery of going <laughs> up in this cable car up to the up to the up to the mountain. <laughs> At any rate, uh, that that uh, just about takes care of my my tour of duty. It sounds short, and it was a long period of time. But uh, this this uh, CID uh, was a very interesting uh, tour of duty, and it involved a, a number of other things uh, like uh, prisoners of war and uh, a lot of. A lot of uh, controversy between soldiers and civilians, wherever. Did you want to go to the war? Want to enlist when they? I, 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 or would I, you have if they hadn't drafted you? Uh, I, I think so. I think so. All my friends and my my brother was a, a glider pilot, and I bumped into him one time overseas. Yeah. How did the war change your life? Did it? Were you married when you went in? No, I was not married when I went in. I, I, I suppose, you know, you go to a foreign country. I, I'd never been to a foreign country when I went in the service. It comes from Lyons, Georgia. I came from Lyons, Georgia, and she knows my redneck background. <laughs> I told her, I told her a story about it already. And. Uh, you know, you go to a foreign country and you have a new language and there's new culture and, and, and food and influences of foreign countries, of foreign people. But uh, I, I suppose that, that broadened my, my outlook on, on, on the world uh, to realize what had happened, you know, was such a catastrophe. And uh, it, it was the beginning of the atomic age. and. Uh, you know, after after the two bombs were dropped on Nagasaki. Where were you when the bombs were dropped? I, I was, uh, that, that's what you would ask, and, and uh, I'm trying to recall. I think I was, the bombs were dropped uh, August 7th and August, August 6th and August 9th on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And uh, I think three weeks later, uh, was was VJ Day, and and the piece was signed on Missouri. And I looked that up before y'all got here, and uh, I suppose I was in in, in Germany uh, prepared to come home. I came home in, in December of '45, so I was in Germany. How did you feel, or how did everybody around you feel? Uh, I, I, I suppose unbelievable in the destruction uh, that, that went on uh, as a result of the, of the bombs being dropped. You know, it took three weeks after the two bombs on, on uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki for the uh, Japanese to surrender. And I suppose just the, the, the enormity Death, you know, I think 75,000 people died in, in Hiroshima. The enormity of uh, the destruction, uh, I suppose that carried over even to later times when, when, when Russia and, and the U.S. were involved in the Cuban Missile Crisis. We built a bomb shelter downstairs, so I suppose we were aware of the of Was the there power a feeling of relief to you that the war was going to be over? Sure. Sure. That's, I mean, and, and I and I think, uh, in spite of the in spite of the, the numbers of people who were killed, uh, I think by and large most Americans felt it was it was justified because it saved American lives, many American and lives. Japanese lives, and Japanese lives too. Were you?
you at all involved in the one soldier that Eisenhower sentenced to death for deserting? soldier that was ever executed for deserting. Uh, Eisenhower was going to make an example of him. My brother happened to be cl classification officer of his company and went to Eisenhower to beg him. To Is that right? Well, I, I, so I, I think John had a, a very interesting uh, tour of duty in the service and he, uh, he was one of the first ones in the Dachau. Book and uh, law. Okay. Uh, did it change your law practice any? The fact that you had law practice <laughs> in I, the army and didn't really follow it after you were married, isn't that right? I, I suppose if I had gone into the service, I would have gone into, into practice of law. But I, I, uh, I left the service, and my brother. I had one brother who, who went into the service, and one brother who the draft board permitted to stay. Yeah, um, <clears throat> did you ever wish that you had gone into combat or had a more active position, or did you think that you were more lucky that you didn't have to ever have to go in and fight? Well, I, I, I think I was very fortunate in that, uh, in that I, I wasn't in combat, and uh, I don't think that I would ever wish that I was a frontline soldier. I think John was, was pretty much... Frontline. Well, he was ahead of the line. John got a, a direct commission overseas, and I did too. I got a direct commission overseas. What does that mean? Uh, direct that, commission. That that means that I got a commission without uh, attending uh, school, you know, officers training. Uh, that, that you, they, you became an officer without having to go through officers training. That's right. That's right. And I think that happened. That happened, John. They wouldn't take him to officer training because he had a hernia. But before he went overseas, they gave him the direct commission which was a way to go overseas. I mean, as bad as overseas was, having a commission, being an officer. It was better. Oh, much better. Yeah. Okay. Wouldn't you say that? Well, yeah. So were you one sure. of the, were you, I know that my dad, when my dad went into the Army, he was almost 35. Yeah. Were you one of the older ones? Yeah. In the, the, yeah. the group? Yeah. Yeah. Did they tease you about it at all? Younger no, kids? Because no. <laughs> my dad used to say they called him old man all the time. Because <laughs> he was 35. Right. Yeah. Did you have any questions in that? Uh, I, I, I think probably the, the service, uh, the fact that women, women were in the service, you know, it waxed. But I think the fact that so many women uh, in, entered the, the, the workforce, you know, you, yep. you remember Ro 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 Rosie the Riveter. Uh, and, and so many, so many women replaced men, and uh, I think that probably was the beginning of the women's rights movement. It was. You know? uh, World War One was introduced the vote to women. Yeah. And then it took World War II before women really began to find their place. But then there was a problem when they went back, when the men came home and wanted these jobs that the women had, or that the woman had run the household and run everything while the man was gone, and then all of a sudden she was relegated yeah. back to the status of woman. Uh, and, and I think that, that gave rise to, by the same token, I think probably the fact that uh, Blacks in the service, and they served with with with, with great valor. Uh, you know, you, you remember uh, the, the squadron of, of the air pilots, the uh, black air pilots from Tuskegee, from Tuskegee. In Institute. That probably uh, initiated a little bit of the civil rights. Uh, movement I think it started. Country. Harold Hudelson says that they didn't, and this is true. They didn't use black soldiers for combat until the Battle of the Bulge, and they needed them so badly then they that they, Harold was a, I mean, the second lieutenant, and they threw them probably at him and said, you know, use yeah. them. <laughs> yeah. And they were good combat people. Sure. Yeah. But up to them. Do you have any other questions? Um, did other soldiers who were in the front lines, did they ever have any feelings towards you because you were not 
actually fighting? You were just kind of investigating? I, I, I never did get any, any uh, of that kind of, you know, I guess they realized that there was, there was, a, there was a place for everyone and this happened to be my niche and uh, we, we, were, we were involved in, in dangerous situations. Battle of Bull, or Battle of the Bulge, we had to withdraw with uh, with the company because the Germans were, had surrounded the, a group of soldiers in Belgium. Yeah, if I ever had to go to war, I think I would like to have your job. Most of the jobs there. <laughs> it, it was it was an interesting job, and and uh, you know something that that I really uh, enjoyed. Did life seem boring or different after you got back from the war? No, I think I got myself pretty much involved in, in civilian activities and business and dating and what have you, right quick. And then it was different then too. Now men come home from Iraq and the whole battalion, the whole company goes back to the fort. Like when, but now at World War II for the most part, you were brought into this country and then said, go home. You know, there weren't, they, like uh, one of our friends said, he came from the Pacific and they landed him in San Francisco and said, okay, find a train that goes to New York. Yeah. You know, there wasn't the, uh, it was just over. <laughs> uh, I, I, was, uh, I, I was anxious to get back home and get into civilian life. As a matter of fact, I threw, I, I could wear civilian clothes, but didn't a lot. I threw all my military gear overboard. <laughs> that's what Johnny did. He threw his. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that's what Johnny did. He threw his uniforms away. What? <laughs> uh, uh, you know, I I was playing tennis oh, last week, and I I told the uh, guy I was playing tennis with. I said, uh, you know, I'm going to be interviewed on World War Two. Uh, I said, how did the World War Two change you? He said, well, said, uh, I had two uniforms and I wore one for a whole week and then I, I would wear the other one and have the first one cleaned. He said, now while I'm a civilian, I wear a pair of pants a whole week and, and uh, have them clean and wear another pair. <laughs> That's how the World War influenced Well, you know, that. was there a CID unit for the Pacific as well? I think so. I think because your father was CID, CID uh, was you know something. That so they were in both places. Yeah, 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 I think so. wasn't wasn't, wasn't well known, but I think it uh, was probably in all the services. Stanley was a lawyer too. Dan was in the infantry. Yeah, that's what I thought. I was I was uh, in the Ninth Air Force. Ninth Air Force service. Well, thank you very much. I'm sorry we're late, Sonny. No, it's all right. And I uh, hope Paula feels better. Well, let me, let me see how she feels. Let's see if she okay. feels like it. Anything else, Alex? No. Can my, you think of my, anything my, else? Mine was a short, a short, short sweet, but interesting because I didn't know anything about the CID. Yeah, I mean, you no. Know. The only thing uh, I've heard about is they're doing television shows now. Oh, they are? With the CID. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Well, it was CIA, was a, which was a another organization yeah. that's a little different. But see, like her father was a lawyer and his brother was a lawyer, but they didn't uh, go <laughs> on to, they were, well, your father. They had to go right to the front. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then the, the Judge Advocate Corps was uh, with another division that uh, had lawyers. Uh, so did uh, they, did they try the cases that you solved? You can turn it on. Is that what happened, the Judge yeah. Advocate yeah. Corps? Yeah. You guys solved it. And